Welcome, everyone. And the topic that we want to discuss this week is something very vital and in the heart of Kabbalah. And once we begin to understand this concept, we can be able to understand why so many things happen in our personal lives. So the Kabbalists explain how throughout life, throughout the process of growth, of me elevating my consciousness, elevating my reality, tapping into miracles and wonders, Again, miracles is not something that I create, that I actually create that miracle. A miracle happens, or the light of the Creator is revealed, when I transform something about, what's, about myself, about what's called the desire to receive for the self alone, the selfish aspect of myself, the reactive aspect of myself, the aspect of myself that needs results now, the aspect of myself that needs a compliment now, that needs reassurance, that needs security. You know, many times we have parts of us that's controlling us. We find ourselves getting happy and sad according to external events, according to what people say or they don't say. Whether you're in a relationship or you're not in a relationship, sometimes people are miserable in a relationship, sometimes people are miserable when they're not in a relationship. But the bottom line is, they're a slave to their own, what's called, desire to receive for the self alone. And the Kabbalists say that our job and the wisdom of Kabbalah is not just to become spiritual people, but it's to be able to elevate to different levels and transform and cleanse my negativity, my selfishness, my desire to receive with the self alone. And as I do that, I naturally get closer to the Creator and naturally miracles happen. I'm not being rewarded and I'm not being punished. I'm just getting closer to the source of abundance because I'm becoming like that source. And it's all about who we are. So one of the things that the Kabbalists share is that throughout this journey, we are going to fail more times than we are going to succeed. That means, you know, you start to study Kabbalah, you learn about the power of restriction, which is a challenge occurs. The first thing we're learning to do is to do restriction. Because as soon as I do restriction, as soon as I stop reacting to the situation, as soon as I stop answering the situation or trying to deal with it right away while I'm out of control and I feel hurt and it's all about me, as soon as I stop that, I let the light in. I create a space that miracles can occur. I create a space. I become a creator. If I respond right away, I create nothing. I create nothing. I'm just responding. I'm reactive. I'm not a god. I'm not a creator. And as a result, I'm disconnected. So the capitalists say the first thing we do is we do restriction. But what happens? Many times we don't do restriction. Many times we fall. What does that mean? And the capitalists share, if we fall, that's not where chaos comes in. Chaos never comes at the first step of falling. Chaos comes in the second step. What's the second step? When I get upset at myself and I beat myself up for falling. When a person falls, you know what? They were meant to fall. Sometimes we need to fall in order to learn lessons. Sometimes the Creator makes us fall, makes us make mistakes. You might say, well, the Creator's making me make a mistake. I thought I have free will. Yes, you have free will. And you try your best, and sometimes you fail. Sometimes it just didn't happen. And then, once you make the mistake, you need to believe I was meant to make the mistake. I was meant to make the mistake, and now what? And it says that once you make a mistake, the chaos comes only after you feel bad about it, and you're depressed about it, and you dwell upon it and you make it a big deal, and you become consumed by it, and as a result, you share with nobody. You share with nobody. You mope. You groan. You complain. You take energy from your friends. You look for temporary sources of energy to fill you up and make you feel secure about the insecure thing that just happened. It's all reactive. So it says that the opponent comes in, not in the beginning where we make the mistake, but he comes in in the end. And he causes us to be depressed, and as a result, I become a non-giver for a long period of time because I'm into myself. I'm dwelling. Is it good? Is it bad? Did I do right? Did I do wrong? When I should just say, okay, I made a mistake. I learned the lesson. I feel the pain and I move on. And I create light and I bring that light into that darkness. Thinking about darkness, dwelling on darkness, moping about darkness, is not going to do anything. It's not going to help anyone. 
It's about what am I doing now to create light? And there's an amazing story from the Bible, from the Old Testament, which the Kabbalists explain is all codes for life. Obviously, the literal story is not going to make much sense when you read the Bible. But if you understand the Kabbalistic meaning behind each of the codes, you learn very valuable lessons. One of the lessons is that the Israelites, which represent all of us, all the souls of humanity, they reached Mount Sinai. And at Moses told them, I'm going to go up the mountain. I'm going to bring you back tremendous energy of fulfillment which was channeled through what's called the Ten Utterances, or the Ten Tablets, as we know. Many people consider it the Ten Commandments. So that energy would be channeled through the energy of fulfillment. And Moses told them, wait 40 days and I'll be back. What does that mean? It means 40 days of doing restriction. 40 days of not being controlled by other energies. 40 days of working on myself so that I can earn that energy. What happened? 39 days later, 18 hours later, six hours before the 40 days was up, the Israelites started to panic. They said, Moses is not coming. The energy is not coming. And what happens when we feel that the energy is not coming? What happens when we feel like, I'm not going to find my true love, or I'm not going to get the right business? We settle. We settle for less. We go for whatever is convenient. We start dating the person that even though we know is not the right one, they make us feel good about ourselves. Or we go for the business deal that's shortchanging ourselves. And they settled, and it says they built what's called the golden calf. A golden calf, which is kind of like an idol worship. And as a result, they got a lot of energy from it. It's a metaphor for how instead of connecting to the true light, we end up settling for little light. And what happened? Moses came down and said, what are you guys doing? And everyone saw the truth that they made a huge mistake. But the Kabbalists share that that mistake is not what cost them the miracle of life. <clears throat> it wasn't that mistake. It was the fact that they were depressed about their mistake afterwards. It says that after they made the mistake, if they had done a restriction and said, wait a minute, we made a mistake, we should feel the pain of that mistake. Let's learn the lesson and let's move on. If they did that, they would have gotten all that light back and more than if they never made the mistake. Why? Because, listen, you learned amazing lessons now. And now, after the amazing lessons, you can go to a higher level. So the lesson is, once I make a mistake, if I feel the pain, move on and learn the lesson, I get to a higher level than if I never made the mistake in the first place. And that's what it means to be on the path of transformation and the path of Kabbalah. That I'm not sitting there beating myself up because that does no one any good. I'm here to create miracles, to create life, to create light in dark places. And the world needs me, my family needs me, my kids need me to create light constantly. And I have no right to sit there and dwell on my mistakes. This week, the energy is there. If you made a mistake in the past or you're making a mistake now, don't worry. Learn from it and move on. Don't hold on to it. The more you hold on to it, the more selfish that is and nothing will work. And remember, to be a true miracle maker, we have to always be looking ahead and seeing what I can transform about myself now and not dwell on the past.